Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you what, in my opinion, is currently the fastest and the best way to create very real looking AI consistent characters. In a lot of my videos before, I've shown some different tools, but lately, Design AI released a new feature in their text to image generator, which has just made this entire process absolutely easy as you're going to find out. We will be using this real life headshot for this demonstration. All the images as well as the links to the different AI tools that I will be showing in this tutorial are given in the description of this video. So let's get started. First of all, when you go to design AI and you do create your account, you're going to get 50 credits for the first time. Each generation, as you're going to see, will cost us four credits. So you still can generate a lot of things per day. That's the good part about Design AI that even on the free plan, after they've given you those initial 50 credits, every time you run out of the credits, every 24 hours, they will give you 32 credits. So that's absolutely great because then you can use this tool every time for free. Once you are on the main page, what you have to do is you have to go to this option that says text to image. And this is where the magic will take place because the new feature that I was talking about, which they have added, if I just close this, is this particular thing called face match, where if I just enable this, we can actually add a photo of the face of a person and then it's gonna mix that along with the prompt and create your consistent characters. So there are some other options, but there are basically three important things. One is of course, that we will have to put the face here. Then it's gonna be the prompt and also this. We're gonna change this often. This is the image generation model. If I just click on this, you can see that Design AI has different models. We'll be seeing around three to four of them, which are good for creating humans or portraits. So let's get started. We already have the headshot with us. What we don't have is a prompt to start creating our first image. So what I did for this was, I basically went to ChatGPT and let me show you my process for this, just to make it very easy and automated. I uploaded the image in chat GPT and I just wrote something like, so based on this headshot, I want to generate different consistent characters. I will give you the general theme for each shot and you keep giving me the prompts. That was the basic idea. So you can see, so it's got it. And this is what I wrote next. First image should be of this man standing in a street wearing casual. So like a very basic thing. And I just had to write this and chat GPT gave me a pretty good prompt. So what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to copy this and Basically, this is what is going to come here in the prompt. We are going to upload the headshot here. All right, so that is also done. You can see the headshot here. So these two things are done. Now, the next thing comes is the model. So by default, you can see that they have selected the Flux image generation model, which is one of the best models out there. We will use Flux, but not for this one, because I just want to talk about a couple of important and good models that they have here. So the ones for consistent character, because you want the character to be as real as possible, we mainly are going to be using the models which fall under the realistic category here. So if I go here, they have a couple of different options. Just lately, they have released the latest model, which is the design realistic version two. This is really, really nice. So for this first generation, we're going to use this one. And now pretty much everything is set. You can select an aspect ratio that you want for this. Since this is of an outdoor kind of a shot, let me go for something which has a slightly longer aspect ratio. So you can change the aspect ratios from here. For example, choose something more vertical, like which will fit a mobile phone or a wider, or you can even go for something which will fit Instagram, social media platforms like a square. So this time I think I'm just going to stick to square and don't check this option that says color match because then it's going to give a lot of importance to the colors in this. We just want it to do its own thing by mixing these two things. So I'm going to keep this off. In the generation mode, you can just select normal because even at normal, the speed is pretty good when it comes to the generations and the image quality on normal is higher than what you would get at fast. So now that we are all set, you can see that this is going to cost us four credits. Now we can hit generate and let's wait for the results here. All right, so we've got our results. And if I just open this up on some models, you get two results and on some models, it'll give you four variations. So you can see that this looks really nice. And whenever you're happy with something, you can just hit download. It'll only allow you to download a watermark JPEG uh, 
image without any sort of upscaling, but that's okay. Later on, I'll be showing you how to upscale these images also. But if we get a full look, you can see that this looks very, very good. And you'll realize that after we upscale it, it'll even get rid of that bit of that contrasty AI look that it has. But we'll do that later because there's some important points that I want to talk about. Now, for the other generations, which I'm just going to be showing you, I'll not show the entire process because that just, that'll just be a waste of time because I've done exactly the same thing that I've done for this image, but there are going to be a couple of differences. So let's go back to our prompts here. So this was the first prompt. Then after that, I told ChatGPT that the next one should be a corporate headshot in a business uh, suit with tie. Now this one, this was a slightly different one. The other ones worked exactly like I've shown you here. Only for this corporate-like headshot, this particular process didn't work very well. So let me just show you. I got this really nice prompt here that you can see. Okay, it kind of described the suit, the tie, uh, the look. Everything was good. I did exactly the same thing. For this, I used, again, this realistic version 2. So even the model stayed the same. And here, I think I again had selected a 1 is to 1 aspect ratio. Of course, this remained the same. Everything else was the same. When I did ultimately get the shots, let me just show you what I got. This was the image that it generated. This was okay, but what I did feel was that, first of all, it had that AI look to it a bit. It didn't look too real. And secondly, I just felt that his face here was slightly narrow. So this was the only category where what I felt was that there was another better way, which I've shown in one of my videos before, where I have, which is dedicated to creating corporate and business headshots. So you can check out the link, which is hovering on top. I'll leave the link to that video in the description also, because there I have shown this uh, new process that I'm just going to be talking about in detail. But let me first of all, show you the results that I got with the new process that I'm just going to be showing you. Uh, so this was with the normal process that we were following, but you see the new result here. I think this just looked much better as compared to this. Because here, if you compare it with the original, this one just looks very, very close. So what I did here was, the only difference was, if I just go back to the uh, Home tab, you will just have to go to the Image to Image uh, Generator. So actually, we don't have that uh, feature here of uploading the face, okay? This works more like where you, first of all, delete this existing picture, then you add the headshot here. And then in the model, I had selected the two options that you can select. One is if you go under styles, this time not in realistic, but if you go to the portrait styles, one style that you can select, which is meant for this, is this modern professional. This really gives out uh, very good results for business headshots because you can see that the style of this model is geared towards a suit and a clean background, like a studio background. So either you can select this or you can go back to the realistic category that we saw before. And here you can see in the image to image generation model, we don't have those many options, right? We only have one which says realistic, but even this works well for this. But you can leave it at modern professional or the results weren't really too different. And this is where I can input that same prompt that I got for ChatGPT for the business headshot. And what makes this different from the text to image generator is because you do get this option which says structure match. What this means is that ultimately when it generates the images, it tries to maintain the structure which is the outline. Therefore, the width of let's say his body and the face is maintained in the generations. But you will have to then do a face swap. For example, the image that I directly got out of Design AI was this one. And then I did a face swap using one of the uh, face swap AI tools, which is completely free, which is called Remaker AI Face Swap. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And I've shown that a couple of times in my videos, so it's not tough to use. But when I did the face swap of this image with the original headshot, this was the final result I got. And you can see that if we compare this with the original, this started to look really good as compared to this. So this was the only exception where that text to image generator model didn't really work that well. Like I said, if you just want to see the entire process in detail, I've got the separate video for generating business headshots using Design AI. You can check that out later. But right now, let's move on to the next image. So the next thing was, uh, the next one should be a full body portrait of this person working out in a gym. Now, I was struggling quite a bit with this. So this was the 
prompt that it gave me, it was pretty detailed. And let me just show you a screenshot of the type of shots I was getting. So you can see here that I was not initially able to get full body portraits. So let me just show you what I did, which ultimately enabled to get me a full body portrait. First of all, let's just go back to our earlier model because so that we can just visualize things in a better way. So that is the text to image model. And here, when you do have a prompt like this and you want to generate a full body portrait, since most of the AI out there aren't really trained on full bodies, sometimes they don't generate the full body, okay? So here you specifically have to mention that it's a full body portrait and make sure the phrase comes at the start because that's how most of these AI tools work, that they give a lot of importance to the starting words inside a prompt. So if you just write right at the start, a full body portrait is gonna pay a lot of attention to that. The model that I used for this was Flux, the one that is given by default. Everything else had remained the same. And one more important change that I did to make sure this is a full body portrait, which is a very good trick, is to definitely write something about the shoes so that you do mention the shoes, so it takes that into account. For example, from ChatGPT, I had got something like, he's wearing a fitted athletic t-shirt, gym shorts, and sneakers, but I even wrote something like, white sneakers. So I really want to tell you that, yes, do include the shoes, because if the shoes are included, then that means there's a good chance that it's going to be a full body portrait. But it still took me around three generations before I got this image in front of you that you can see, which really look good in my opinion. And that's what the Flux model is known for. It really generates very good looking images, but as you can see, sometimes you will have to tweak the prompt a bit to get the final result. Now let's move on to the next generation. So the next one should be of this person sitting in a cafe working on his laptop. This was very interesting. I was very, very happy with the result. The prompt was good. And I had used this prompt along with, this time I changed the model to if I go back to realistic, this time I had used design realistic version one. And this also worked very well because let me show you the image here. So this is what I got out of design. And I think this really followed the prompt really well. One of the things that I was very impressed with is in all the design AI generations, the hands seemed really good. In this, they were not perfect by any means. You can see this finger is slightly looking bad, but overall, if you compare it with what we get with the other AI tools when it comes to generating consistent characters, the hands there can be really scary and just completely off. So I was really happy with what design was giving out here. Really nice look to this image. The only thing here that I wanted to improve was that if you look at the headshot, he doesn't seem a person who is this lean. So I did want to improve his body. And this is where I actually, just for this, I went out of design to quickly correct this. And the result that I got was something like this, where I just added some mass and muscle to his physique. So just see this before and after. Now, how did I do this? This is literally a one-click process. Let me show you a very cool AI tool. So this particular tool is called facemex.ai. I'll leave the link to this in the description. And if you go over here, you can, you do get a certain amount of credit, so you can use it for free. And you're going to basically go over to AI image generator in that AI tools menu, and then go to this tool that says body shaper. And we're going to upload that original image that we got with the lean physique from design. And the moment you do that, it's basically going to give you this in-painting brush. So I'm just going to increase the size of this brush. And what you have to do is just make sure you cover the entire body. Okay, like this. Right now, I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. But just make sure the entire body is covered, not the fingers. Just still like something like this and the remaining parts of the body. And then you can just press OK. And before you hit generate, you basically just get five options here. So since he's a guy, we basically have two options. I had selected this last option. And what I like about this is that even though in the style here, this guy is without the t-shirt, it's not like it's going to remove the t-shirt and give you a muscle body like this. No, it just uses it as a reference to add that amount of mass on the body. So when I ultimately, when I did hit generate, this was the result that I got. So again, before after and I just felt that this looked much more closer to that headshot image. Now let's move on to the next generation. The next one, I wanted a full body portrait of this man standing next to his car. And the reason I chose this was because one of the models uh, back in design that we have is, let me just search for car. 
I'm in love with my car where this person is standing next to the car and I just thought that this model is going to work well but to be frank this gave really bad looking results so this didn't really work well. This was the only model which I was not happy with, with because the person that it generated just looked totally different even though I had uploaded the headshot here. And the final thing that I did was since most of these images that you get on the free plan on design are gonna have slightly low resolution, I basically used upscale media AI to upscale it for free. So upscale media is really, really good. You can just go to the website, the link is given in the description, you upload the image and just with a single click, it automatically upscales it and really improves the quality of each pixel. Let me just show you an example to demonstrate this. So remember, this was the image that I had got straight out of design, but after doing a face swap and upscaling it, you can see the facial features change because of the face swap, but just see the difference in the quality. This just looks more photorealistic right now. And that's why I like upscale media AI because it's not, it just doesn't upscale the image. It actually makes very intelligent changes to the pixel also. So don't forget to upscale your images so that you can get rid of that, a bit of that AI look that we often get in these images. So in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And in case you wanna follow along all my different experiments with the latest AI photo editing tools out there, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.